Actually, actually, yeah, well, I'll start. I'll start with something that that is kind of very recent. So we actually finally have the uh, I would call it like maybe the V two of the website, much prettier branded. Uh, it's at inter dot trade, so you can finally see much higher level uh, presentation of the protocol. Uh, goes through, you know, uh, explain explains what we're about. Has a bunch of good links. Um, finally, the brand has come together for this. So uh, really awesome work uh, by the uh, design natives team who. Uh, who, who does a lot of other uh, brand brand work in the uh, I think both the Cosmos and the wider crypto industry. So they uh, yeah they did some really cool stuff there and uh, yeah we'll be updating that as we go with more stuff. Um, more I think features. Agoric is the one that actually got them hooked into the Cosmos ecosystem and they took the ball and ran with it and have done some awesome stuff. Yeah. Oh, did it work? Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I yep. wasn't I wasn't sure if they had that experience before. Oh, okay. Interesting. Maybe there were multiple paths, but uh, yeah, they first worked worked with us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, they do they do really cool work and. Uh, it's, it's like, it's just nice to see this thing come alive. Um, yes. oh, that's great. Yeah, so actually uh, on that too, so the, the, the again, the site's now, you know, more officially live at hinder.trade. Um, yeah, we're working on um, on a newsletter that should be coming soon. It's going to give a lot of like, a lot of updates, obviously. Talk about some of the things that IST and Inter protocol in general are focused on. Um, I know we have a Git book that's also incoming. I don't think I have a date for that yet, but that's in the works. That should be on the site as well. And uh, the other, the other option, the, the other channel is the uh, YouTube channel. We want to start getting all the videos and all the great things that Zuggy and Dean, you both are uh, <laughs> running around talking about, and, and some other people out there. I was going to say, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's a whole group of people that, you know, in content that we just got to get somewhere. So we should have that all very soon. So that's kind of all related to that. Um, yeah, the, the other thing I was going to say quickly, I know there's a video floating around for the Crypto Cito. I don't, know if, I don't know if he's on this call, but um, I know you and uh, you were both... Um, Probably what was that last week now? Both on the uh, on, on the Cryptocito podcast, um, talking a lot about you know going on with the Gore, uh, with the Gore, with within a protocol, and obviously Cosmoverse um, was a big topic with that since <laughs> that group is really you know dry down. Um, so uh, yeah, we'll, we'll 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 make sure to reshare that. But that's a really good good uh, good overview of what's happening too. Um, do we have you yet, Zucky? Because we all hear about the uh, in Nebula. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay. I'm still fighting my AirPods. Like my uh, audio yeah. quality will be terrible unless I like fix this. So. Oh. Like, we sound pretty good. Yeah, is this is acceptable? I can do this. Yeah, this sounds like how you always sound. Okay. Yeah. Cool. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Usually my my phone air call a phone microphone quality is terrible if I don't have my AirPods on. Oh, okay. So let's talk about Nebula. Um, I am um. Uh, 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 let's talk about Nebula. Nebula. I gave a talk about uh, IST protocol, focused on all of the like nitty gritty of the internal mechanisms. Um, uh, there was. It seemed like it was pretty well received. The talk is is online. They're cutting up the Nebula like talks into like you know where you can like get the specific talk. Right now, there's just like the live stream of the, just like the whole day stream. Um, Nebula was really cool. Um, like the uh, and like ECC in general was like the whole Paris week was like, uh, like really good, like you know, huge, huge concentration of all the blockchain people there. How many people were at Nebula? Um, so they only had space, or like they were very, let's say, um, conservative in how many tickets they did, so it, it, it felt actually pretty and it like it wasn't like super full. Um, there was a lot of demand that was unsatisfied that like could have been accommodated. So you know, if there's like one thing that we probably should learn or, the, or like that uh, could have been done better at Nebula was like, you know, accept more people for tickets and like, um, cause there was like plenty of also overflow space in the venue, um, like out into the courtyards, et cetera. Um, so it was like only a hundred ish people. <laughs> I saw from the video that your room was, feel, was, feel, was full. So, yeah. That same yeah, yeah, it was, it was a, it was a, the room was pretty full, but like it could have been fuller. Like it was like, okay. <laughs> yeah. And the, uh, most of the people there were they were they mostly developers, or were they just kind of like ecosystem interested people? Yeah, I mean it was up? the it was the it was the val like it was it was there's a lot of surprisingly there's like a lot of validators in Paris. I don't know why. Um, like there's a lot of local French. There's like a strong local French validator community. Um, and so there were a lot of people like that, um, 
there were like all of the people who like you know the, the you know the, the 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 standard cohort of Cosmos validators and zone builders and smart contract builders um, that we see everywhere. Um, it, it, it you know it was just like a really solid Cosmos event. Um, it was the the sort of I would say most uh, like conversa- the, there were a lot of presentations that were very interesting um, and as always like a good hallway track. Nice. Excellent. Any specific feedback or, or questions that surprise you on IST? I'm still, I think I tried to really explain to people why the arbitrage mechanism. Well, I mean, I would say the most important thing that was happening at Nebula, right, is that like the MEV conversation in Cosmos is really heating up. And you know, on one hand, osmosis is taking, you know, osmosis has like sort of, Sunny came out with a very aggressive anti-MEV uh, sort of set of talking points at Nebula that he's like been walking back a little bit. Um, but like from our point of view at uh, uh, on IST, like we're really excited about engaging with all of the MEV teams um, because we think that this is actually going to improve stability and sustainability of the protocol. Um, and I think that's, but like the MEV conversation in Cosmos is just uh, so like the whole MEV conversation just like summarized for the people who aren't pl- who aren't playing this in- uh, uh, inside baseball, um, which <laughs> might be helpful. Um, OK, so the concept of MEV is that there is value to be extracted by choosing order of the transactions. So, you know, in the IST context, it's like, you know, the atom price is falling. Uh, uh, for, you know, as, as, as it does in you know, crypto market volatility. Um, and there is now people who are trying to bridge in IST to repay their, their debt on their vaults uh, or like repay their vaults and, and, and reduce their liquidation thresholds. There are people who are trying to add atoms to their vaults. There are people who are trying to, um, uh, there are people who are trying to um, uh, bridge IST to, uh, to ARB the uh, AMM pool. Um, as liquidations are occurring and buy those discounted atoms. Um, and the, so all of this stuff is happening simultaneously and you, you, you can think about it. Okay. Well, as a, as a val, as a, as the block proposer on any given block, you have all these different competing demands for block space. Um, and, you know, if you, you know, you can, you know, if there are cheap atoms, you can choose to do that. You can choose to, you know, accept someone bribing you to making sure that they're, uh, uh, you know, to ensure that there is uh, that their transaction that shores up their vault uh, gets in, um, you know, all of those different things. There's going to be a lot of competition for block space. And we think having like a robust marketplace, which really is not something that Tendermint offers out of the box and that these like uh, protocols like Skip and Megatech are building um, will make things a lot actually better. Whereas on if you're primarily a DEX like Osmosis, what you're worried about is that like if a marketplace for this transaction ordering starts uh uh, like you're going to get produce like worse prices and you're going to extract value from trades um, from users. And like there's sort of an arms race on the deck side. Um, and I think we have a lot of thoughts in general about how on the full agoric platform, um, MEV mitigation is going to work. Um, but we have uh, um, we think that there's like this this huge in, in general, like that was a big just like, you know, in general, like for Cosmos, I think we've you know, the MEV conversation has been fully centered on Ethereum for most of the last two years. Um, with uh, things like Flashbox, and now you're really starting to see that it's sort of becoming a big part of the conversation about Cosmos. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the the you know I was very much assuming that MEV would, was was bad, but when you actually go digging in, a it's partly unavoidable, b it's something you can optimize and add value with, and you know and and it's a matter of of you know things that people want to do that you push off into a corner, they're going to find a way to do it, um, surfacing it and, 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 and really getting it to be something that can be reasoned about and that you can build smart contracts that, that can management and that management manage it. And that sort of thing can actually add some real value. So, so that was an eye opener when, when, when uh, I think it was uh, Sean from Mechatech was, was walking through some of those scenarios and it's like, okay, clearly that's going to be an interesting discussion and something that will indeed evolve over time. And one of the reasons that, as you noted elsewhere, why we really want extensibility is to be able to have, to be able to have that evolution happen in a healthy way. So, yeah. Oh, that was not an area of the technology I was expecting to get into at this point. That was awesome. <laughs> All right. Anything else you wanted on Nebular, 
uh, Santi? No, no, that was good. <laughs> I mean, yeah, any other observations? I'm, I'm, I'm always, I'm all ears. I, I would have loved to be there. That it sounds like <laughs> a really good event, and yep. everything else that was happening in Paris at the same time seems, yeah, it was just, yep. it was really good. Um, the fun uh, thing, by the way, about the 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 the, the MEV conversation, you know. Yeah like liquidation conversations, it gets into sort of deep, important, critical economic design, flow design, stuff that needs to be tested and measured and stuff that has, you know, competing interest in what you want as a framework so that they can, you know, rationally cooperate where that makes sense. And so, and so that's something that we've done, uh, you know, lots of analysis in various parts of the, you know, what you need in a stablecoin infrastructure. And these are, these are the areas where people and end up going as deep as they'd like um, once that once they get into the implementation of and, and the evolution of IST that's an area where you know there's gonna there's, there's a lot of deep thinkers already thinking there that are worth talking to so is that something that happens sooner than later sooner I mean it, you know it happens over time I mean we've, we've you know. had a lot of conversation you know talking about liquidation you know um, uh, we've walked through right. a bunch of liquidation processes in various presentations and we'll you know Zucky did it in in, in, in the nebular conference and we'll go you know uh, and we'll probably have even deeper conversations about how it currently works and what are some of the future paths pathways that we will all you know model and explore in but that's not before launch all those extensions you know the goal is roll out with you know something that is that is you know, robust, you know, it's minimum viable product. It's both viable and minimum, right? Um, and uh, uh, and then with an extensibility so that it's easy to add um, and evolve those over time as the market changes, as more economy is available on, you know, on chain, all those kinds of things. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, you mentioned liquidation. We, we, we have some charts that I think would actually be kind of cool to, you know, put on the website maybe around those. Uh, okay. I, I yeah. feel like, I don't know, if, I don't know if the white paper actually has any no charts uh, yet. Di yeah, yeah. There will be coming out of things like the economic stress test and out of, you know, load testing against liquidations and that sort of thing. Um, yeah, so, so I so should clarify schematics, not not charts. Ah, yes. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Apologies. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's some cool ones there that might be actually really helpful to explain some of this. Um, okay, interesting. Good. So other elements of the technology, right? So we, 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 we proceed apace on the implementation. Poor contracts are all, um, you know, working. Uh, uh, they've, been, they've gone through... Um, uh, security audits, and they are now in the economic stress test that is, you know, doing various liquidation scenarios and 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 so forth. But there are remaining platform issues that were or platform uh, uh, features that we're finishing, some of which then get folded into those contracts. So, for example, we're we, we're we're in the process of migrating to much much more higher efficiency. Uh, notification to off-chain sources like your applications about what's happening to vaults. And that's that's both, you know, will support, you know, fancier and fancier economic stress testing. It'll support the data that, it supports the data that Gauntlet needs to be able to run, you know, weekly models to provide uh, um, governance parameter recommendations to, to you know, sort of, you know, um, best balance um, uh, over collateralization ratios and capital requirements while ensuring solvency. Um, and so those are all about, you know, the data pathway out of the chain and which things need to be notified and, and, and that sort of stuff. And that's just kind of the finishing engineering work that always takes longer than you think, but it's critical to the kinds of robust systems that a lot of us have built um, in the past. You know, telemetry, wherefore, if there's an issue, you can actually measure what happened in production instead of having to go and reproduce it into a network and that sort of thing. So that's a lot of the work that is happening on the um, on, on the interprotocol. Oh, and one more thing is making sure that that all the data that's necessary to be able to upgrade these the, these contracts as they evolve. You know, some, some parts are pluggable, some parts you know we we have locked down in particular ways, but may want to evolve in the future, um, and those will happen by contract upgrade voted by governance. And so all of those mechanisms, um, you know, those are sort of the last elements to to integrate in and verify and test and, and that kind of thing. So that that engineering is all underway. Um, still, you know, uh, 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 targeting, you know, getting all this stuff done in Q3 um, for people to be able to, to 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 actually start using it on the interchain. So that's the goal. <laughs> Got it. Yeah, there was there was an interesting about the data. You know, the I think Zucky, you had you had a I think you had a slide on Oracle networks. Oh yes. Yeah, that was really interesting. I I, I is there anything we want to touch on there? Uh, Zucky, you have anything there? Or I can jump in. You might be oh, his AirPods. Okay. So go ahead. Um, 
Uh, yeah, sure. So, so the, the so Agoric has an Oracle network, or rather, you know, the Agoric ecosystem has an Oracle network that's being worked on. Um, simply staking, one of our validators, you know, took the lead on driving that. They're also a chain link node operator, and they've been um, building out the software to be able to do chain link style architecture that runs in the Agoric ecosystem. Um, and so there is a, you know, aggregation contract in JavaScript that runs on chain that aggregates the assertions from a set of independent oracles. Um, and, and the, you know, those people who have those, those validators that have experience being Oracle node operators, they've got the expertise to pull that together. They're doing that all independent of, you know, the opco. I mean, we, we, it's a smart contract being built on the platform. We help them with those, those parts of the, the, the work, but it's just awesome to see that kind of, you know, community development providing a key element of this ecosystem architecture. Um, and, you know, those are those are all validators that people across the, the Cosmos ecosystem are familiar with. And so um, so that's coming together. Um, uh, you know, it, it operates. Um, you know, we we we, you know, we did load testing. We have things we want to that need to be improved um, in the in the pathways coming in. And so we're 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 working on on providing um, uh, the interfaces they need to be able to um, lower the load of providing uh, Oracle information into the chain. But everything's architected to be able to have pluggable Oracles of which they will be providing sort of this core uh, Oracle infrastructure inspired and supported by how Chainlink approaches things. Uh, but, you know, uh, I, I love a, a characterization that um, uh, Sergey of Chainlink had a long time ago, uh, which is, you know, we want to launch DeFi Legos and NFC Legos and, and that sort of thing in an information rich world. And so to us, you know, prices and other kinds of information from 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 Oracle's are just another DeFi Lego, right? They're an information Lego that you can plug into whatever your applications are. In this case, you know, as with many of these things, IST is the first consumer of those uh, of those components they're quite pluggable they're extensible it'll be easy to add new kinds of oracle providers um you know as as the community or other folks on the interchain end up providing you know cr cross ibc uh, oracle services so I'm very excited about that and it's also just really nice to have people that are really experienced with this building up something with comparable robustness and quality um to be able to integrate in and, and make available first in Agoric, and then presumably someone will be able to bring it out over IBC to the rest of the to, to the uh, interchain. So, so that's something I look forward to. But but not you know the focus there is let's get it working for Inter, and then and then uh, you know and then we'll see how the opportunity grows from there. Awesome. Or rather, they will see how the opportunity grows from there. We're <laughs> we're yeah. just helping. I am on my. That's airline. great. That's great. Isn't this better? Aha! Uh -huh. No, it's not. It's actually worse. <laughs> no, it's worse. <laughs> Okay, that yeah. was good. Okay. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> okay, um, I was yep. going to say, uh, uh, yeah. Anything else we uh, want to cover on tech? Any questions we got? Uh, one, one question that came in was, was um, it, it, we've kind of brought this up before, but it's probably worth bringing up. It's, uh, you know, how do I get my asset of choice as a collateral with, with IST? You know, yes. How do I bring something I want or that, a, a, you know, a community sentiment wants over to IST. Um. Well, there'll be, so, uh, you know, I can opine on that, but I won't be the one that determines that, you know, right. the governance is, is twofold. It's, it's the DAO, you know, the, the, the builder DAO, the governance of the chain, the token holders will vote at the end of the day for, you know, key critical things like what assets are, are allowed as collateral. And they will also approve an econ committee, an economic committee that has the 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 job of doing sort of the day to day economic, you know, uh, 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 if you will, bank, uh, cur you know, currency management, as it were. Um, you know, they are, they will be the ones that look at the recommendations out of systems like Gauntlet and say, "Yep, that looks reasonable. Um, let's roll those into the system." They've done the modeling. They've done they've done the analysis. Um, uh, that looks good. And so as new collateral types come in, they will have to, you know, have a model of what's their volatility, what's the risk, and that drives what's the required collateralization ratio, what's the required capital to provide a shortfall reserve as part of the reserve. Um, and, and those are all sort of critical elements of collateral for a stable token is not that it not be volatile, because, you know, I mean, just like house prices are volatile, and they're, yet they're the collateral for a lot of the US dollars in the world, you know, Lots of the, the crypto assets are volatile, but they have value and they can, they can provide collateral. But 
you need a model of it and you need to make sure that the governance parameters around it in terms of liquidation ratios and that sort of thing, you know, are correctly fit and the, the debt limit correctly fit those collateral types. And so that's got, you know, so there'll be a process that the econ committee will propose, um, you know, presumably the builder DAO will review and approve. And then that'll be the process that new collateral types have to go through. You know, this, this is inspired by, I mean, you know, MakerDAO uh, and others have evolved processes like this. And they're currently kind of the, 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 the standard, the bar that you should get over in terms of discipline around risk management to make sure that, that IST is a solid, um, you know, solvent token that's robust for, you know, for, for the ongoing future ecosystem. And so well, I'm very excited to have that happen. And we definitely want to see other community tokens. That's part of the whole, you know, part of the reason we renamed inter, renamed to the inter protocol really was to sort of focus all our minds on this is about enabling all those assets in the interchain. But there's got to be responsible risk and monetary policy around that, that, that the econ committee, it will be, you know, will be the people we ask to help the chain with that. Oh, that's a great answer. Thank you. That's awesome. Um, a little birdie told me you might be in, in Korea. <laughs> it's going to be a big birdie that flies me into Korea. I think Zucky <laughs> might already be there. Are you already in Korea, Zucky? I'm already in Korea. Uh-huh. I'm doing this call I'm, at I, 5 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 you already you already had uh, uh, you you are you you are still on jet lag, so you were probably already awake, right? Is that true? <laughs> well, I, I I feel like everyone in Korea seems like it, I was like it was like 3 a.m. and I was like messaging and like everyone else in blockchain in Korea was also awake, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe this is just like how Korea works. I haven't figured this out yet. Like, what, what is what, what are the waking hours in Korea? Yes. Uh, uh, yes. A few people have asked me. So I'm getting on a plane tomorrow, and I will be there on the 28th, and I will join you. A few people have asked me to schedule meetings. Just like, I have no idea what time will be like there from both a jet lag and schedule rotation and, of course, you know, crazy, insane number of events. But I'm really looking forward to it. So. For Hack Adam, right? For Hack, Hack Adam, Adam, yes. LA, and then Biddle Asia. Yep, 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 yep. Nice, nice. Yes, I will be presenting some of the things that, or you know, that uh, uh, Zucky talked about in Nebular. I will, we will, we will cover them some more with a, with a, you know, different and other audience focusing on, uh, you know, on, on how they could, how to be able to use it going forward for, for uh, you know, interchain ecosystem stuff. So I'm looking forward to that. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. Uh, if there, if there's anything else, either of you want to bring up? If not, nope. I think that's it. Yeah. Short and sweet. Okay. Perfect. Cool. All right. Well, thank you both so much. And uh, again, actually, yeah, let me emphasize the, the site. If you haven't checked out inter.trade, uh, <laughs> totally revamped. Uh, it's alive now. And uh, uh, yeah, we'll be getting more stuff up there. So um, definitely make sure to check that out. Yes. It's very slick. It's very nice. It's got some of the key documents here. But we yes. know that we're all going to continue to add data and te- your, you know content and technology. Um, you know, there's there's folks like, you know, Jason Potts working on the econ committee proposal to present to the chain and, and, you know, for, for in terms of what its job will be and what, you know, and, and that sort of thing. Um, and so, so this stuff should start, you know, more, more material will, will be streaming out over the next couple of months and we're excited about it. So. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Dean, Zaki, thank you so much for your time. Much appreciated and for all the listeners. Thanks for joining. Thanks all.